Henry, you're a big fan of single board computers. Why, yes, I am, Robbie. Why How do about you, ask? you, Jeff? Oh, Why you do I ask? <laughs> Why do fan. I ask? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Bo was here from Ameridroid a couple weeks ago on episode 616. Hi, Bo. Mm-hmm. And he showed us something really, like, that intrigued me, impressed me, and excited me. Was it the mini oh. SPC? The, the size of a stamp? That was cool. That was but that's cool. not the one I'm thinking of. Oh, okay. All of. right. Not the one I'm thinking of. The one I'm thinking of is called oh, this. the cluster board. Yes. What? Oh, Bo, I think you forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> he left it for me. Oh, that's Bless his dick. heart. Really? The guy. Yes, Bo, he you did. Rock. So he cool. absolutely rocks. Um, so this is. Henry, I'm just going to explain this quickly to you because you haven't been yes. here and you weren't here for episode 616. Time to learn. These slots that mm-hmm. look like memory module slots, Yeah. each one takes a single board computer. Really? A module. They're called the A64 SoPine modules or SOPine modules from Pine64. That's cool. Each module has four cores. What? Uh, yeah. Each module has two gigs of RAM. Okay. <laughs> And a micro SD card reader. Hmm. The board, the cluster board, mm-hmm. has GPIO headers for all seven of the boards. Wow. USB 2 for all seven of the boards, plus a USB micro, plus you've got an EMMC shared reader here. You've got real time clock battery, you've Jeez. got gigabit Ethernet, and all of these are connected to a single gigabit Ethernet port, so they're wow. communicating with your network. So essentially, this can either be a cluster. So you've got the power of all of those cores, yes. right? <laughs> or they can be individual computers. So you can plug this That's in and neat. have seven computers show up in your network. And that <laughs> really so cool. excites me because I'm thinking like some of the things that I could do, like this would be a Titan Pi server. Yes. This would be an, a NEMS Linux server. This would be like a Debian server doing some iSCSI target distribution on my network to give me right. network shares. Yes. This one could be an <laughs> FTP server. This one could be a LAMP stack so to, cool. to host my website. This w- like, oh, I've still got two left and I'm out of ideas. Okay, so here's a question though. With all of them connected, all of them running, if one became compromised through a network vulnerability, would all mm-hmm. of them be compromised? No, because each one is an individual computer. So, okay. mm-hmm. so th- I say no, well, possibly, but no different than having seven individual computers right. on okay. your network okay. and one okay. of them getting compromised, right? right? Okay. Oh. But be smart about your security, right? Well, of course, yes. And, and that's, that's important. But each one is basically its own computer. It's like having seven computers on your network, but so it's cool. built into one board. That's nice. I'm going to show you what the computer itself looks like, Henry. Oh my gosh. This is the computer. That's smaller than my phone. That's it. Smaller than your phone. It you could fit 10 of these in your phone. Yeah, yeah, actually <laughs> could. Yeah. It's just that the phone doesn't have the proper backplane. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. So we've got micro SD, we've got the A64 SOC. Uh, just a gorgeous little card. So this goes in here, just like a memory module. Just oh, like, just like installing RAM, right? Yeah, like just it just exactly it always like takes two tries. It's actually, yeah, you got to put it in the right way, Robbie. Yeah. There you go. So uh, I would have oh seven goodness. of these would be seven different computers. So cool, guys. But then I'm looking at this, and I'm like, okay, well, what do I do about mounting it? And I started looking yeah. at some really cool a- a micro ATX cases and thinking about that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Then you got to get a special power supply. I did try my standard power supply on this, like a nice thermal yep. take ATX power supply. Yeah. But this is only a 5-volt draw. Oh, so it wasn't Th- working? There's no 12 volts, yeah. so it's not, dr- it's not drawing enough. Um, it's not drawing anything from the 12 volts, so my power supply doesn't show power good, right. and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't power up. Yeah. So uh, then I thought, well, I could put some inline uh, resistors to, to draw on the 12-volt channel and power up the power supply, mm-hmm. but then I've got to mash up the cabling on my good yeah. power supply. Yeah. I don't want to do it. <laughs> so then I started thinking, okay, I could buy a different power supply, Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I got talking to one of my friends who happened to have an old mono wall. <laughs> what? This is a router. Okay. So this is a micro ATX router powered by mono wall. But mono wall was discontinued. Yeah. The, the main board in this is just a 32 bit main board. So it's yeah. not anything that you can really do anything else with All these right. days. And it's not powerful. It's just, it's meant to be a router, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it is a micro ATX case. 
Oh. Mm. And there's a really, really interesting thing about this. I'm just going to get in here, Henry, because I've got my screwdriver. I want to get the cover off of here for you and show you what is really intriguing me about this. Because mm. the power is the main thing with the, the Sopine cluster board. Mm -hmm. okay, How am I going to power it? Tell me that the screw holes for this two not form factor to in there. This is a micro ATX main board. So they f this fits the it form fits. factor. Oh my god! It will actually <laughs> fit so in cool. there perfectly. Okay, so wow. it's it's built to fit a micro ATX case. But how are you going to power it? Well, you'd have to have a big like an ATX power supply or a micro mm -hmm. ATX uh, STX power supply, something like that. Now this is an older system. Yep. But what I love about this, Henry. It takes these two cables mm -hmm. from uh, a power adapter, which I have here somewhere. You guys can see it. I can't reach it. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> it's it's there. there. It has a 5-volt power supply that is 6.7 amps. What? What? Okay. 6.7, 6 6.67 amps, huh. giving uh, 12 volts, as a matter of fact. Now... What it does is mm -hmm. it takes that power from that power supply, goes through the down stepper to 5 volts, okay. and it has an ATX connect connector on it. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to pull this main board out of here, this yes. old um, router main board. I'm going to put the micro ATX Sopine cluster board in there. Notice they are exactly the same form factor. Yep. Right? And now this one little tiny computer it's on the seven. network <laughs> is seven quad-core wow. computers okay. with two gigs of RAM each, each one running Debian or some other server OS, whatever I want. Oh, my goodness. So cool. Mind-bending. <laughs> so now all you need, though, is like a backplane that has the USB hookups so that you can just... Only if you need USB, Jeff. Yeah, fair enough. I fair could enough. connect the ex I could connect the fa the front panel USB to these USB ports. Yep. So that if mm -hmm. I plug in a USB, it could go into one of these Sopine modules if I wanted to. Yep. And I might do that. Maybe have one of them that's that uses that for something. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe storage or something like that. But realistically, I'm going to use the gigabit. Yeah, that's uh, true. Connectivity. Okay. Yeah. For storage, I'm going to use the gigabit yeah. for iSCSI or something like that, or oh even goodness. SFTP uh, or uh, SSHFS would work for me as well. Um, CIFS would work fine, like Samba. That's so awesome. There you go, Man. folks. That's going to go in there, Henry. Oh, so I've got to order more Sopine modules. Yes. I'm going to fill that thing to the brim. <laughs> yes. I'm going to put some Kingston SD cards in there, uh, and we're going to see what we can come up with. It's going to be so oh beautiful. My goodness. I'm looking forward to the day where something like that becomes the new broadcast server. Yes. No, I don't think that's <laughs> happening. That's all yeah. you need. <laughs> you need the GPU, that's all. You really got to have a good yeah. GPU for broadcasting. However, mm -hmm. what this could, uh, one of those Sopine modules could do is be a recipient for uh, Nimble Streamer. So yep. the broadcast oh. server could receive, could be sending the broadcast to that, yep. mm -hmm. and then that could stream it to Nimble Streamer and wow. rebroadcast it. It could also then daisy chain to the next Sopine board and take a picture every 10 seconds of the video stream live oh to create snapshots for us so that we have some thumbnails to work with. So, there, so like, cool. there's so much you can do. Then you could use one of those USB ports to plug in a webcam, and that can be a backstage pass camera, and yeah. that could be taking mm -hmm. a picture every 10 seconds. Or it could be streaming live video to YouTube. It can do that. So, no, so broadcast, <laughs> broadcast server, no, you're limiting it. Uh, <laughs> slap on the wrist. What do, were you thinking, you can, do so much, you can do so much with it because it's just a whole bunch of little servers. That is exciting. Sitting inside of a, an old mono wall. You, you, wow. It's funny. As you're going through this, this reminds me of way back, oh, gosh, I want to say 15 years ago. Yeah. Remember mm -hmm. when you were you trying that there so or starting to work on building a computer into a desk? Yeah. This totally reminds me of that. It's like yeah. taking something that it wasn't intended for. It's like, oh, i got to repurpose this. Yeah, yes. back in the day, <laughs> yeah. an old desk with the, with the drawer handle. I cut out the drawer handle and put an optical drive in yeah. there. And then the motherboard was in the drawer itself yes. back before SBCs were even thought of. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it was just a, a little ATX computer in a drawer. So cool. <laughs> yeah. It so, was very fun. I but this it. is going to be even better, Jeff. Yeah, be I know. <laughs> That's awesome.
Uh, have you uh, have you played with those yet? I want to hear from you. I want to get some ideas. Hey, I mentioned some of the things that I might do with it. What would you like to see us do with it? Uh, I've got some G GPIO connectivity. Am mm -hmm. I going to connect some things to that and see if we can? Another idea I had was uh, to write an app for your phone mm -hmm. so that when you connect to the Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. you uh, so you get to the studio, and what do you normally do? You text me yep. and say, I'm here, unlock yes. the doors, right? <laughs> yep. So think about this. One of those SoPine modules running an Apache server with a connected app that only works on our Wi-Fi. As soon as you come into the Wi-Fi, uh, it brings up a thing that allows you to push a button that turns on a light that tells me that you're here. Basically like a silent doorbell. It's a smart office. Right? That's awesome. That would be an easy, uh, just a, a relay coming off of the GPIO being triggered by um, a GPIO command on the Apache server mm -hmm. and a little app that lets you ring the virtual doorbell. But only when you're connected to our Wi-Fi. So just when you get to the studio. So then when you so that's don't another idea here, you'll just change the <laughs> Wi-Fi password. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> oh, no. the, why does it say it's, it's red like on the Orville game? <laughs> it's <just> locked. Oh, <laughs> <is that? laughs> so many ideas. Removed. Oh, I can't wait to try it. Oh.